Have you ever traveled to another country, reached for a light switch, and then paused in confusion because it flips the wrong way? You push up, expecting light, and nothing happens. Instead, you have to flip it down to turn things on. Today, we're diving into the curious case of light switches, exploring why some countries flip up to turn on the lights while others flip down. The story takes us through history, safety concerns, cultural habits, and even the way our brains are wired to think about on and off. Right here on History of Simple Things. Think about how many times a day you use a light switch. Maybe in the morning when you stumble out of bed, when you walk into the bathroom, or when you come home at night. It's one of the most ordinary interactions in modern life. So ordinary that we barely think about it. But the moment you find yourself in a place where the switch works opposite to what you're used to, you notice. And here's the interesting part. Neither way is wrong. Both up and down have valid reasons behind them, but they come from different histories and different philosophies about design. Let's start with the United States, where most people are used to flipping a switch up to turn the lights on. This standard traces back to the early 20th century, when electrical wiring was becoming more common in American homes. Early switch designs were clunky and mechanical, and engineers needed a simple, logical rule for which position would be on. Up made sense for a few reasons. First, it matched the natural idea of up equals on. Think about volume knobs, sliders, or even gas levers. Pushing upward or forward often means activating something. Psychologically, we tend to associate up with power, energy, and positivity. Down, on the other hand, feels like turning something off, winding down, or shutting it away. There was also a safety factor. Imagine you're in a dark basement and you need to turn the light on. If the switch is mounted vertically, pushing it up puts your hand in a higher position and gravity ensures that if the switch breaks loose, it will fall into the off position. That makes it safer in some cases because falling off means cutting power rather than leaving the circuit live. Now let's hop across the Atlantic to the United Kingdom. Here, the convention is the opposite. Flipping a switch down turns the lights on. To someone from America, this feels upside down. But to the British, it's completely normal. And they also have reasons for it. For one thing, early British switch designs were different. Many were toggle types mounted so that the down position was physically easier to press. Instead of thinking up is on, the design philosophy leaned toward Pressing down activates. It's similar to pushing a button. When you push something down, you expect it to do something. There's also the matter of safety codes. In the UK, electrical regulations are some of the strictest in the world. Having down is on allows switches to be wired in a way that minimizes the risk of accidental activation when someone brushes against them or leans on the wall. Plus, Many older homes in Britain had switches mounted lower than in American homes. From that angle, flipping down was a more natural hand movement. The story doesn't end there. If you go to Australia or New Zealand, you'll also find down is on. That's no coincidence. It's inherited from British standards, since both countries were part of the Commonwealth and adopted similar electrical regulations. Meanwhile, Canada, heavily influenced by American manufacturing and codes, uses up is on. Other parts of the world followed whichever power influenced them the most during the time electricity was spreading. So in a way, light switches became a symbol of historical ties and colonial influence. The direction of your switch today might say more about your country's past than you'd expect. Beyond history and engineering, there's also psychology. 
Why does up feel like on to some, while down feels natural to others? It ties back to metaphors embedded in our language and culture. In English, we say things like cheer up, rise and shine, or things are looking up. Up means positive, active, alive. Down, meanwhile, is often linked to negativity, feeling down, turn it down, shut down. This metaphorical framework makes the American system feel intuitive to Americans, but in Britain and Commonwealth countries, people grew up with the opposite physical habit. For them, pressing down equals action, the same way you press down on a button, a piano key, or a door handle to activate it. It's a learned association. The truth is, whichever system you grow up with feels right and the other feels foreign even though both make perfect sense in their own contexts. It gets even more interesting when you look beyond English-speaking countries. In some parts of Europe, like Germany or France, the orientation of the switch can vary depending on the brand or even the installer's preference. Sometimes, horizontal rocker switches are used instead of vertical toggles. With those, pressing the top usually means on but not always. In places like Japan, switches are often larger rockers or even push-button styles, making the whole up versus down debate less relevant. Fast forward to today, and this whole debate is slowly being disrupted by technology. With smart homes, voice assistants, and touch-sensitive panels, the classic toggle switch is becoming less central Instead of worrying whether up or down means on, people just say, Alexa, turn on the lights. But here's the funny part. Even with advanced tech, companies still design physical switches as backups. And guess what? They still have to choose which way is on. Old habits die hard. The very debate that started a century ago is still influencing the way modern devices are built. So, why do some countries flip their light switches the opposite way? The short answer, history, safety, and habit. Americans went with up is on, influenced by psychology and engineering choices. The British and Commonwealth nations went with down is on, influenced by early design practicality and strict regulations. Over time, each became ingrained in culture until one feels natural and the other feels strange. It's a perfect example of how technology doesn't just solve problems, it also shapes behavior. The next time you flick a switch, take a second to think about the history and reasoning hidden in that tiny gesture. It might just brighten more than your room. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.